This is a production of World Video Bible School. To God be the glory. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet. What I've just read comprises what is known today as the Decalogue, or more commonly, the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments can be found in Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 17. They were given to Moses and the children of Israel at Mount Sinai shortly after their exodus from Egypt. And friends, many people believe that the Ten Commandments contain the fullness of man's responsibility toward God and that if I'm going to go to heaven today, they say it will be by keeping the Ten Commandments. Friends, I want to tell you that's not true and, and it never has been true. Even in the days of the old law, the Ten Commandments did not comprise the fullness of God's law toward mankind. You see, the Ten Commandments were just a portion of the law of Moses. In fact, going back and looking at the whole law, Bible students tell us that there were some other 603 directives, meaning that there were some 613 precepts comprising the law of Moses. And so even then, the Ten Commandments were not the fullness of the law of God. Some years back, Billy Graham wrote in a syndicated newspaper column, he said the Ten Commandments give the concise statement of God's moral laws and they have never been set aside. I want us to study that question today. Are the Ten Commandments binding on mankind today? And friends, this is a very important question because a lot of people believe they are. And as a matter of fact, to even suggest that the Ten Commandments are not binding on men today, that upsets some people and, and it raises a lot of eyebrows. In fact, that's why there's this battle today about the Ten Commandments being in many uh, public places because a lot of people believe that they represent God's law for us today. What I want to do in this lesson is to study this question. Are the Ten Commandments binding on us today? And I want us to open our Bibles and see what God has to say about this subject. And In fact, you might be surprised at what we find. And I want to launch the study with 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 15. The Bible says, Be diligent to present yourself approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. I want you to focus on those two words, rightly dividing. What does that mean? Well, to rightly divide the word means that we need to know what portion is, is a part of the old law and what portion is a part of the new law. It means that we need to know what portions are binding on us and what portions are not. It means we need to know what is said to us and, and what is applicable to us and what is said to other people. All right, three points we want to cover in this lesson. Number one, we do not live under the Ten Commandments today. Number two, why we do not live under the Ten Commandments today. And then number three, today we live under the commandments of Christ, which is known as the New Testament. All right, point number one, we do not live under the Ten Commandments today. Now, I know that might be surprising for some people to hear, especially coming from a, a Christian organization, but friends, our concern is to follow the Bible. And the fact of the matter is, the Bible specifically states that the Ten Commandments have been done away. I want you to listen carefully to Romans chapter 7. In verse number 4, the Apostle Paul is teaching the Romans that they no longer live under the Old Testament, that is, the law of Moses. And he says, you have become dead to the law by the body of Christ. He says that you might be married to another. Now, when he says you are dead to the law, dead to, do, does that in any sense sound like it is still operative? No, it doesn't. Dead to means it is inoperative. Now, now somebody says, okay, well, the Old Testament law is dead. I understand it is no longer binding. But how do you know that includes the Ten Commandments? Well, let's continue in this text. We drop down to verse 6. 
He says, but now we have been delivered from the law, having died. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Certainly not. On the contrary, I would not have known sin except through the law. For I would not have known covetousness unless the law had said, you shall not covet. I want you to notice Paul is talking about the law to which we are dead, and he gives as an example of that law, thou shalt not covet. Do you recognize that? Friends, that's one of the Ten Commandments. And so Paul clearly teaches that we are dead to the law of Moses, including the Ten Commandments, which he specifically cites as an example. I want you to notice with me another passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 7 says, But if the ministry of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious, so that the children of Israel could not look steadfastly at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, I want you to notice he's talking about something that was written, that was engraven in stones. He's talking about that which caused Moses' face to glow and, and he had to put a veil on his face. Do you remember that in the Bible? If you go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and Exodus chapter 34, you'll see he's talking about when the Ten Commandments were given. When, when Moses received the Ten Commandments, his face glowed. All right, keep going. You drop down to verses 11 and verse 13 of 2 Corinthians 3, and the King James says that this was done away according to verse 11. It was abolished according to verse 13. You see, when Moses received the Ten Commandments, his face shone with glory, but that glory was fading away. And Paul uses that to illustrate the fading glory of the old law, including the Ten Commandments. In fact, he specifically mentions them. He refers to the old law as passing away, and he refers to the other, the new law, as remaining. Friends, the Lord is specifically telling us that the Ten Commandments no longer remain. They have been done away. Okay, secondly, as we consider the point that we don't live under the Ten Commandments today, I want us to consider the consequences if we did. What if the Ten Commandments were still binding on us today? Well, first, if the Ten Commandments are bound today, then the Sabbath day is bound today. The fourth of the Ten Commandments said, Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates." Exodus 20, 9 and 10. And the penalty for violating the Sabbath day was death. Exodus 31, 12 through 16. Numbers chapter 15, 32 through 36, we read about a man who picked up sticks on the Sabbath day and, and thus he violated it. And we also read he was executed for so doing. Now, friends, if the Ten Commandments are still binding on us today, are we also going to enforce this portion in relation to violating the Sabbath? Now, some people would argue that the Sabbath day for Christians is, is Sunday. It is the Christian Sabbath. In fact, Billy Graham and others teach this. But the Bible nowhere calls Sunday the Christian Sabbath. Exodus 20 and verse 10 says, the Sabbath day was the seventh day of the week. Now, in addition to not being able to work on that particular day, according to Sabbath day requirements, a fire could not even be kindled on that day, Exodus 35 and verse 3. Friends, that would mean that a woman could not even turn on her gas range to cook breakfast or to prepare lunch. A man could not even turn on his gas furnace on a cold Saturday afternoon. And it wasn't just the violation of the Sabbath that carried the death penalty. I want you to consider with me some of the other commandments that also had the death penalty linked to them. Commandments number one and two dealt with idolatry. Idolatry called for capital punishment, Deuteronomy 13, 6 through 11. Commandment number three dealt with taking the Lord's name in vain. That also called for capital punishment, Leviticus 24, 10 through 15. Commandment number four, Sabbath day violators were punished by death. Numbers 15, 32 and following. Commandment number five required honoring and obeying parents. Disobedience to this command 
You guessed it, it was capital punishment. Exodus 21, 17, Leviticus 20, and verse 9. Commandment number 6, forbade murder. The penalty was capital punishment. Exodus 21, 12. Commandment number 7, prohibited adultery. If you violated this, you were to be put to death. Leviticus 20 and verse 10. Incidentally, homosexuality also demanded this as punishment. Leviticus 20 and verse 13. Commandments 8 and 10 dealt with theft and coveting. You may remember from the Old Testament, Joshua chapter 7, a man by the name of Achan. He coveted, he stole, and he was executed. Well, you get the point. But the question is this, who is authorized currently to, to put these violators to death? If we're going to bind it, the consequences also must be bound. Okay, a second consequence to consider if the Ten Commandments are still binding today. Consider this with me. If the Ten Commandments are still bound today, then the whole law is still bound today. In Galatians chapter 5 and verse 3, Paul lays a principle down for us, and it is this. Acceptance of one part of the law of Moses, such as circumcision is what he was considering at the moment, acceptance of one part of the law demanded keeping all of it. I want you to listen to what Paul says. He says, And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. And so, friends, to bind the Ten Commandments is to bind the whole law of Moses. All right? A third consequence to consider, if the Ten Commandments are still bound today, then it implies that there is more than one lawgiver. If the Ten Commandments are still binding today, then Moses is still a lawgiver. And if Christ has a law binding on us, then he is a lawgiver. Friends, that would mean that we have two lawgivers, and thus we are married both to Moses and to the Messiah. But friends, James chapter 4 and verse 12 says there is one lawgiver. And Romans chapter 7 and verse 4 teaches that we are married to Christ only or else we are committing spiritual adultery. And so his point is, if we are holding to the old law and the new law, then we are spiritual adulterers. Friends, the implications of the Ten Commandments still being binding today are not good. All right, here is major point number two. First, we made the point that we do not live under the Ten Commandments today. Point number two is why we do not live under the Ten Commandments today. Now, I'm going to go right to the heart of this issue and I'm going to answer the question. We do not live under the Ten Commandments today because they were part of the old law that was nailed to the cross. Now, here's the passage. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 14. The Bible speaks about the Old Testament law and it says, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and He, Christ, has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Now, we've already established from Romans chapter 7 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3 that the Ten Commandments were a part of that law. And the text says that law was nailed to the cross. And so we don't live under the Ten Commandments today because the death of Christ made them obsolete. Secondly, as we consider why we don't live under the Ten Commandments today, we need to appreciate the fact that the Ten Commandments were given to Israel, not to us. The Ten Commandments were never intended for mankind today. Shortly after the children of Israel came out of Egypt, Moses ascended to the summit of Mount Sinai to receive two tables of stone containing the Ten Commandments. Those commandments are recorded for us in Exodus chapter 20 and Deuteronomy chapter 5. Now Exodus chapter 20 is when they were initially given. Deuteronomy chapter 5 is when Moses rehearsed them again for the sake of a new generation that was soon to inherit the Promised Land. But before reciting the commandments on that occasion, Moses prefaced them with this statement, Deuteronomy 5, 2 and 3. He says, The Lord our God made a covenant with us in Horeb. The Lord did not make this covenant with our fathers, but with us, those who are here today, all of us who are alive. 
You see, Moses pointed out very clearly that these commandments that he was about to read were given specifically to them, to a specific and select group of people, namely the nation of Israel. Number three, as we discuss why we don't live under the Ten Commandments today, it's important that we understand that God never intended the Ten Commandments or, or the old law to be permanent. The Ten Commandments were a part of the old law, and from the beginning God stated that it was temporary. The prophet Jeremiah prophesied about this in Jeremiah 31, 31. He said, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt. You see, he said, a new covenant is going to be established, not like the one I gave them when they came out of Egypt, not like the one containing the Ten Commandments. In the New Testament, Galatians chapter 3 and verse 23, but before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore the law, which contained the Ten Commandments, was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. Now friends, what does that mean? What does he mean that the Old Testament was a tutor, but when the New Testament has come, the law of Christ has come, we are no longer under a tutor? It means that today we are under the law of Christ. We are no longer under the old law which contained the Ten Commandments. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 9 says, He takes away the first that he may establish the second. Colossians 2.14 says, Having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. And friends, lest anybody miss the point, the Lord made it abundantly clear in Matthew chapter 17 on the Mount of Transfiguration. Peter, James, and John are present on the mountain with Jesus. And there miraculously appeared Moses and Elijah. And Peter impetuously suggested that he build three tabernacles, one for each of them, thus placing Moses and Elijah and Jesus all on the same level. But the voice of God came from heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, hear Him. Friends, it is Christ's law that we are to hear today. It is the law of Jesus Christ that is binding on us today, not that of Moses. Matthew 28 and verse 18, Jesus said that all authority had been given to him. And so, if Moses and his Ten Commandments are still in effect today, friends, they are minus any authority whatsoever. All right, major point number three. Today we live under the commandments of Christ, not the Ten Commandments. Friends, today we live under a better covenant. Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 6 says, But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, inasmuch as he is also mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. Now, sometimes when it's pointed out to people that we do not live under the Ten Commandments today, people will respond and say something like this. They will say, So you believe we can worship idols today? You believe we can profane the Lord's name? You believe we can be uh, disobedient to parents? You believe we can commit murder and, and adultery? But friends, that's not the logical or the scriptural conclusion here. The Ten Commandments are not the only source of moral authority. We certainly do not teach that it's all right for men to engage in these sins. In fact, we teach that these things are wrong. But the reason that we teach that they are wrong is because the law of Christ teaches it, not because the law of Moses teaches it. As a matter of fact, nine out of the Ten Commandments are repeated in some form in the New Testament, the law of Christ, which is applicable to us today. For instance, commandment number one and commandment number two prohibited having other gods and commanded that we refrain from idolatry. In the New Testament, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10, Jesus commanded that we worship and serve God only. 
Acts chapter 10, 25 and 26, Peter forbade a man to worship him. Colossians 2, 18, Revelation 19 and verse 10, angel worship is prohibited. 1 Corinthians 6, 9 and 10, Galatians 5 and verse 20, Paul forbade idolatry. And so we worship God only and we refrain from idolatry. But it's not because Moses taught it or because the Ten Commandments taught it. It's because Christ did. Commandment number three forbade taking the Lord's name in vain. In Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9, Jesus taught that God's name is to be hallowed. Ephesians 4.29, Colossians 4.6 teach against the wrong kind of language. And, and so we respect the name of God, but not because of what Moses said, but because of what our lawgiver says in the New Testament. Commandment number four commands keeping the Sabbath day. Now, Saturday was the Sabbath day. It was to be a day of rest and reverence. It was a sign between God and Israel. It is not found in the New Testament, in the law of Christ, and so we don't teach that one. We, we don't practice that one. Commandment number five taught respect and honor for parents. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 in the New Testament says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. And so we teach it. But again, it's not because the law of Moses taught it. It's because the law of Christ does. Commandments 6 through 10 legislated against murder and adultery and theft and lying and bearing false witness and covetousness. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus spoke against murder and adultery. Romans 13 and verse 9, Paul wrote, For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet, and if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in the saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, we could go on and on citing New Testament verses that prohibit immoral behavior, but the point is this. We are not free to commit these evils. But friends, it's not because Moses or the Ten Commandments said so. It's because Christ and His law says it today. All right, a summation of everything that we have said. Number one, we do not live under the Ten Commandments today. Romans chapter 7 and 2 Corinthians chapter 3 specifically tell us this. Number two, the reason why we don't live under the Ten Commandments today is because they are a part of the old law that has been nailed to the cross. Number three, today we live under the law of Christ. It is a better law with better promises. And, and all of the same moral principles that are taught in the Ten Commandments are also included in the law of Christ. In fact, the only commandment excluded in the new law is to remember the Sabbath day. Friends, today, if you want to be saved and go to heaven, it won't be by keeping the Ten Commandments. It won't be by following the law of Moses. Salvation today will not be found in Judaism. Today, there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved than the name Jesus Christ. Friends, the law of Christ teaches that if a man would be saved, he must hear and believe the gospel. Mark 16, 16, the Lord said, He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. John 8, 24, Jesus said, If you do not believe that I am He, you will die in your sins. Secondly, after a man has heard the gospel and believes it, he must repent. Acts 2 and verse 38, Peter told the people on the day of Pentecost, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of sins. Acts 17 and verse 30, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Thirdly, a man must confess his faith in Jesus Christ as the Son of God, just as the Ethiopian nobleman did in Acts chapter 8 and verse 37. He said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10, With the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And finally, a man must be baptized in water for the remission of his sins. 1 Peter 3, 20 and 21 says, There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. At this point, when a person is baptized, the Lord will add him 
to the church, the body of Christ, Acts 2.47, and if he will live faithfully for the rest of his days, he will find a home in heaven eternally. Dear friend, salvation today is in the gospel of Christ, not in the Ten Commandments. For a deeper study on what you must do to be saved, I would encourage you to visit www.beingsaved.org.